Hey, Trisha Goyer here. I'm jumping on really fast live. I'm going to answer Trina's question on my Facebook page. If you have any questions about schooling, parenting, life, feel free to leave them there. So I'm going to try to make this quick. So um, Trina asked, let me, let me get to the exact question. I should pull this up. It was about how to um, write. Okay, here we go. How do you find, how do you legit find space in your head a day to write when you're home all the time and my few quiet moments are spent getting my heart ironed out with God? So that was Trina's question. Um, and so the thing, cool thing is that I have always worked at home with kids. So <laughs> this um, self-quarantine is kind of my life. As I've already been living, um, except we don't have sports and therapy, um, Bible study, so I'm actually having more time in my day. But I know, hey, Kristen, um, or Christian, I should say, but so many people are trying to balance working from home and kids and getting that space. Um, so it's super challenging, and I don't, I've never had like a eight to five or nine to five job that I've had to do. Um, but if you ha have a flexible schedule, these are some ideas. So Trina's asked about having the, the time and the energy and the concentration to get some writing done. Um, and so what I do is I try to figure out what time I work the best. Um, for me, it is early in the morning. So I love to get up early and I love to have that quiet time. I usually have time reading my Bible, praying first, um, really getting into um, just getting myself centered, getting that peace first in my heart. And then usually my kids are still sleeping and I'm talking, sometimes I'm up at four, sometimes five, sometimes six. I wake up naturally. I'm one of those people that wake up naturally, but I I found that that quiet early morning, I can get a lot done. Um, but maybe you're an afternoon person, maybe you're a night owl, figure out the time that you can um, best focus and try to block that out. Now, because I homeschool, I'm not getting kids up in the morning and now all of you have kids at home. So if your kids are home, let them sleep. Let them sleep in. There's no reason why you need to get them up, do school stuff, at eight or even nine, let them sleep in. If you can work in the morning, try to get that work done in the morning. Okay, so um, my, most of my kids will sleep in. My little guy, sometimes, he's nine now, he will wake, he's the one that always wakes up the earliest and he will, I'll make sure I get him breakfast. Even if I'm in the middle of writing, I'll just get up real quick, get him breakfast. Um, he usually likes playing with the dog. Sometimes he'll play in the backyard with the dog. Um, sometimes he'll wanna put on a show and I'll let him do that. That morning time, if I can keep working, usually I'm on the couch with my cup of tea, and if I could keep working during that time, I will work. And then um, before I try to get the kids up by 8.30 or 9 so we could get homeschooled done because we had to leave for therapy. But now, um, hey, Jasmina, is that how you say it? Let me know if I'm saying that right. Um, but we um, are don't have to go to therapy. We don't have to leave at noon um, to go to therapy. So I'm even letting my kids sleep until 9 30, 10 o'clock. My teenagers, if I let them, and sometimes on the weekends, they will honestly sleep till two. Um, those teen <laughs> need, that, need that sleep to grow, but I will let them sleep in because we have all day long to get our schoolwork done. So if you can get that work done in the morning, um, feel free to block off that time. And sometimes because I'm getting up early, I will need a little nap in the afternoon and that's okay. They're usually playing by that time. They're doing their own activities or crafts or playing outside with each other. Um, so try to figure out the time that you can block off, even if it means your kids in front of a movie for a couple hours to get your work done. Cause I know so many people have never had to balance this kids and getting work done. Um, and feel free if you have any questions here to, do that, okay? So then, it, I remember when I first started doing this, I would had three kids that I was homeschooling, so I'd block off two hours in the afternoon. I'd get all my writing done in those two hours in the afternoon. I'd tell my kids, this is mommy's writing time. I would put a movie on, I would set up Play-Doh, I would get Legos out, and you know, the first couple of weeks they whined and complained, hey Liz, um, and 
feel free to ask questions, anybody. Um, but they didn't want to do that independent quiet time. But the more that we practiced, they just knew, <coughs> sorry, that those two hours, that was the time where mom was going to work. Um, and so it really just helps to figure out in your day, whether it's getting up early, blocking out a couple hours or in the evening. And there's been times definitely I'm on writing de deadline. As soon as we eat dinner, I'm in my room and I'm working on something. But once you figure out those times, let everybody know. You can even get your calendar out and, you know, we don't have sports activities right now, but block those times in, in the calendar to figure out how, <coughs> sorry, to get your work done um, and get your kids to help you with that. This is also a good time to start working on maybe getting some chore charts down and different things that <coughs> I'm going to start coughing all at once now. Hold on. Let me get my water. Oh, it's right behind me. Um, see, I'm in my bedroom with my um, exercise bike that is currently being used as a hanger for my coat. So block out that time. Let your kids know that you have that time too. <clears throat> and then set deadlines for yourself. So I will say, okay, um, and, and because it's that writing time, I will not check email, <coughs> whatever your, your work time that you're doing. I will not check email. I will not get on Facebook. <laughs> this is my time and I have a goal. Um, right now, I'm working on a book, so I'll say my goal is so many words a day, or if I have an article that I have to, I'm going to get this done in the next hour, and give yourself a goal and set those goals. Don't get distracted by all these things or getting on and watching the news or any of those things. <coughs> so, oh, sorry. All right, but feel free to ask questions. Um, and then um, I love the night before. I don't have any virus. I just got, I just got started talking too fast. <coughs> hey, Vanessa. Okay. The night before set out things that your kids can do and figure out a plan for a day. And I know some of you have to um, do the school activities that, you know, school homework that you're, and the school is setting home. Don't feel you have to do it, you know, between nine and three. And I mentioned this um, the other day that when you are working with a whole group of kids, you might need from 9 o'clock till 3 o'clock to educate all those kids. But if you just have one, two, three, I have five kids at home that I'm homeschooling right now, it takes a lot less time. And so the night before, I will get activities out that we're going to do for the day. So last night, I figured out a couple of books we were going to read together. Um, and then even this morning, I printed up some worksheets from um, – Super worksheet, I think what this is called. Super teacher worksheets, I think is the website. It's a subscription site, but it's only like $25 a year. And I printed up some worksheets. We did all a butterfly art thing today, and we um, I found some YouTube videos that we watched on butterflies. Now I usually have my regular homeschool curriculum, but because this is spring break, we're kind of just doing some fun things, kind of schooling, kind of doing spring break. Um but just know that if you just make a plan ahead of time, like basically what I'm saying, make the plan. <laughs> pick the hours for work. Pick the activities for your kids. Let your kids know this is the plan, and that will make a big difference. Um, Marianne said, I've been working from home and homeschooling my kids for three years, homeschooling for 10. However, how do you advise a mom that has little? She has a three- and a four-year-old who require a lot of attention, but she also is trying to make ends meet financially. Um, Marianne, that's a really good question. And um, once you figure out, okay, these are the hours that I need to work. Maybe it is if the hour, if the hours are flexible. Maybe it is waking up before the kids get up, or if your kids have nap time, or if there's um, not even a nap time, there's just a quiet time. So you know, for this hour or two hours in the afternoon, we're going to do quiet activities and. A lot of those kids, I know three and four year olds, have a lot of energy. So plan like the hour ahead of time to do something active. Okay, so before I'm going to sit down and ask the kids, you know, to, to paint or do Play Doh, I'm talking like the little watercolor washable stuff because otherwise it's going to make a mess everywhere. But the things that they can do pretty independently, Play Doh, uh, before you're, you can expect them to sit down for even an hour 
go in the backyard and do races from this part of the fence to that part of the fence or do something to get their energy out um, and then have the quiet time or this is time for work. But for me, I have written, sometimes I've written four books a year with kids at home. And really it's, it's amazing if you dedicate and just focus on, I'm not going to check email. I'm not going to do these things, but these small parts, a couple hours here, an hour here after they go to bed, sometimes I'll go in and work um, another hour that really um, helps and focus your energy when when you have the most energy, focus the part, the things that you need to concentrate on the most. So in the morning, personally, I have the most energy. So I will, that's when I will do my actual writing or my editing. I will not check email. I will not do this mindless stuff in the afternoon. Maybe I'll even be sitting there in the afternoon or evening before bed watching a movie with my kids. Last night, they were watching Frozen 2 and I was sitting there answering emails because I can still watch the movie and answer emails. I don't need a lot of brain power for that. So think about times um, that you can do that. Okay, Martha, conference calls. That's a good question. Conference calls are really hard. And also, I record a podcast. So <laughs> this is what it's like. Okay, guys, for the next 30 minutes or 45 minutes or hour, mommy is going to be on a call. And I don't need you to scream. I don't need you to yell. You guys can watch this movie. And what I try to do, because I, I usually am in control of my schedule, um, I will schedule everything like after 1 o'clock. Because in the morning, if I can give them the time where we do school, do art, play in the yard, cook something together, when they have that time, because I gave them that time, that focus, then when I say, okay, you guys got free time, I'm going to go on my conference call or I'm going to go report a podcast, then they will actually um, be okay with it. And most of the time <laughs> they're okay. There has been times I will honestly have to say, and thankfully uh, my assistant Kristen edits my podcast. So, so there has been times I'm like um, interviewing someone. I'm like, can you hold on a second? I need to go tell my kids to quiet down because they are singing right outside my door or something like that. Or even on conference calls, people know that I have kids at home. I just did a conference call with my agent, an editor, a marketing director, um, all these people, and I just warned them, warned them ahead of time, okay, I'm going to have, uh, I have kids running around. So <laughs> I, I told them I was going to be on this call, but just let them know I might have to go and talk to them. Um, thankfully, also, my husband works from home. So there have been times when he's on a conference call that I've had to tell him to quiet down. And if I tell him ahead of time, hey, I have a conference call, if you can just listen for the kids, then he can kind of do that too. All right. Um, okay. So that is just my information on working at home. I'll sum it up real quick. Figure out what hours that you can concentrate the best and block those off for um, yourself. Figure out something that you do with the kids, unless they're sleeping, then that's a wonderful thing they can be doing. Um, plan ahead of time activities that they can do and set them all up for your kids. I will go to my dining room table or my breakfast nook table and I will set up Play-Doh, I'll set up Legos, I'll set up everything, painting stuff. They're old enough now I can leave that stuff. Um, and set it all up for them before I need my quiet time. Um, if they're awake, I will go and do something active with them to kind of get their energy out. Um, and then I also reserve the times it's just for them. So I try even during our school time or when I'm doing activities, I will not answer a phone call. Um, so I will know it can go to voicemail so they know that time is for them. All right. Well, I hope that encouraged you. I will jump on if you have any other questions about homeschooling, parenting, balancing everything. Um, pretty much this has been my life for the last 25 years since I started homeschooling. My oldest one that is 30 now. So any questions, feel free to just post them on my Facebook page and I will jump back on.